Coming to the stage is the man who's been an entertainer for most of his life. He's gone from football stadiums to television screens to making people laugh online. His characters and wardrobe are just as big as his personality. He's an actor, host, and one of the greatest entertainers I know. Please help me welcome to the stage my boy, Anthony Adams, a.k.a. Spice Adams. Clap it up. That's it. That's got to be more, man. Come on. I was NFL star, nine okay. years. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, versus yep. dance moves yep. Chicago. Hey. We'll get to all of that <laughs> hey. in a moment. So starting off, let's take us back to Detroit, Michigan Spice. What was it like growing up in the D in the 80s? Man, the D, dude. You know, I really didn't know how it was until I left. When mm. I went to college at Penn State and uh, people started just speaking to me, just saying, hi, what's up? I was like, what? <laughs> like, because in Detroit, that's fighting words. <laughs> You don't just walk up to nobody and be like, what's up? Like, what, what, what is up? What's up? So when I was at Penn State, they was like, what's up? And I was like, I was looking at people like, what is wrong with these people, man? Like every block I walk, somebody was speaking to me. So it was, it, it took me a while to adjust, man, at least like two years. Cause I just thought everybody was weird for you. <laughs> for saying but, hello. Yeah, dog. You don't just speak to nobody in Detroit, man. You get shot. Shot or beat up or like whatever order, if they, you know, oh. it's, 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 it's real out there, man. I remember one time I was walking from, it's a place called Skateland. I used to roller skate every Saturday from uh, one to four and four to six. And then sometimes six to nine, if my mom, you know, that was, that was the older crowd. She used to let me say six to nine. But one time I was walking home, had my skates over my shoulder, shoestrings tied up, whatever. This dude grabbed my skates and... I was like, oh, it's on. I was 12, right? My cousin I was walking with me, he was a little smaller in size, but he was 14. So I'm like, boom, it's about to go down. Like, cause usually you see it coming. Somebody walking down the same block that you walking down. Yeah. He, he coming this way, I'm going this way. So I'm like, if something go down, I got these skates and I'm gonna I'm a blast dude with these skates. So I'm walking down there. He's He got like five people with him, whatever. So. Dude, like, take my skates off my shoulder. So I'm like, oh, it's about to go down. I'm like, Dre. Dre is all the way down, <laughs> down the other street. Like, get him, eh? <laughs> get him. <laughs> dog, I was so mad at Dre, dog, man. That man stole my skates oh. and everything, dog. <laughs> I was hot, man. That dude looked like he was in high school, man. Him and his, his buddies. And Dre was, he was he was a freshman in high school. So oh, I'm man. like, you know, Dre, Dre know what's going on. Dre was down on a corner, dog. Like, get him, at <laughs> Duck. P punch. I'm like, man, yeah. But Detroit, man, I, I love Detroit, man. That's my city, dog. Love Detroit. 313. 313. Three. Is it so cold in the D? It is, dog. It's cold, but not as cold as Chicago. Oh, Look at the man. breeze coming off the lake. Ain't nothing like it's one thing to be cold, but to be cold and then get that breeze. Yeah. Oh man, that junk is the equalizer. The wind man. chill, the wind chill, the hawk, they call it in Chicago. The yeah, hawk. Yeah, you hear it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that hawk be coming, boy. I remember the first time I went to Chicago, I was like, man, it probably ain't that cold. Yeah, okay. And I was in the airport. You know, the airports have the double doors. Which right? one? Uh, O'Hare. 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 Okay. And the first door of outside opened, mm. but the door to the inside was still closed, and I was still inside the airport. Mm. And just the cold air through the door, I was like, that's my bad, Chicago. I yeah. shouldn't I shouldn't have questioned how cold you how cold you be. <laughs> that's that's my bad. I'll never make that mistake again. So let's go back to your apologize. childhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your childhood mm -hmm. is it's just you and your mom, your only child. What was what was that like? It was cool, man, because my mom never let me use the fact that my dad wasn't there as a crutch. Hmm. You know, and um, you know, she was always instrumental on me getting good grades and she was a teacher herself. And so she used to be a stickler with like handwriting. So now when I write things and people are like, oh, you got great penmanship. It's like, it's because of my mom. Like she mm. spent so many hours with me, like writing my name and, you know, all of that stuff. So now it's like, whenever I write, it's just like a testament to the work that my mom put in. But my dad went to prison when I was like four. 
So I grew up without having a father figure in the household or whatever. And now I understand the dynamic of fathers being in the home mm -hmm. because I can leave for a weekend and the whole house is just like, it's out of order. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but I grew up without having my dad in the household and my mom, you know, she was real instrumental on in teaching me how to be a boy to become a man. And so, you know, she would always teach me, you know, how to open up doors and, you know, be nice and courteous and, you know, where you're supposed to walk if you're walking with a lady down the street and, you know, seeing people home when you drop them off and all that other type of stuff. So she was real old fashioned and, you know, I appreciate her for it. And my mom is the one who made me play football. Really? I didn't, I didn't want to play. I want to see in Detroit, you got the Pistons. Right. So we got the bad boys. We got Isaiah Thomas, uh, John Sally, Joe Dumars, Dennis Rodman, uh, uh, Vinny Johnson, like all of those guys, man. So that's all we wanted to be like. We played basketball in the street where, you know, you got the hoop out there and then a car coming, you wait for the car to go by, then you continue hooping. Right. That's all we did. So with football, it was, my cousins was always like, man, you will get hurt playing football. So I was like, yeah, you right, you right. <laughs> Let me stick with this jumper. But I've been this same size and height, Kev, since I was 12. When I was 12, dog, I was a man. I was I was two ninety. What? And I was like I was like six foot. Five and somebody eight. took your skates. Yeah. Who took your skates if you were six foot two ninety? It was it was five dudes. I'm oh. fighting five dudes. So out of the five, one of the dudes grabbed my skates. Oh, okay. But I'm thinking it's gonna be two versus five. Right. Was, what kind of skates were they? They're just regular skates, man. man. It was some skates that obviously they didn't have. I don't know. Like if it, usually, you in high school like that, you just get some rentals or something like right, that. Right, right. They they wanted my skates this particular day, or whatever. And you know, every now and again, you get got. Man. You get got. I Listen, I got beat up all the time. I know. I'm hey, if he would have saw me uh, two years after that, it would have it would have been <laughs> entirely different. It would have been entirely different, man. I started lifting weights. Yeah. And you know, started you know seeing what my hands was like. <laughs> So two years after that, it would it would have been it would have been a different story. All five of them boys. <laughs> so so Tell not me. only did your mom introduce you to football, she actually introduced you to the coach at Martin Luther King High School. Do you remember what that conversation was like? Dog, yeah, it was all of three seconds. <laughs> so <laughs> in Detroit, there's three top schools: Cass, King, and Renaissance. I okay. want to go to King. Cause most of my family went to King and everybody was talking about how hard it was academically. So I was like, I always like a challenge. So I'm like, yeah. it can't be that hard. Let me, let me go see, let me go see what y'all talking about. Right. And it was, it was, it was extremely <laughs> challenging, man. Uh, we, it was a, a program called MSAT, Math, Science and Applied Technology. And I like science and I like technology, whatever. So that's, and I like math. So it uh, made sense for me to join the uh, MSAT program, but you got to take a test to get into the school. So I took the test. I passed it, and once I passed it, then my mom was like, okay, now you gotta play football. And I'm like, man, I ain't playing no, I'm a basketball player. Well, I ain't playing no football. Right. You, see the, you see the jumper, <laughs> you see that, you see how wet the jumper is? Come in the backyard right now, shoot on the crate, nothing but crate, <laughs> boom, going straight in, you know? And um, my mom was like, no, nah, you gonna play football. And because when I was growing up, I was always too big to play in Little League. Mm. Like I would get on the scale and they'd be like, yeah, right. Or first <laughs> I would show up and then they'd be like, Hey, how you doing coach? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not one of the coaches. I'm actually 12. I'm actually 11. I'm trying to, you know, wow. Be, uh, the player. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> I already know you, you, there's no way you can get on the scale and it's going to say anything less than 145. Wow. So, uh, once I turned 14 and was able to go to high school, my mom was like, all right, bet. So she was real cool with, um, the, my starting quarterback, his dad, she was, they were real good friends named Jeff McCall. He bought me my first pair of cleats. I'll never forget it. Uh, so she took me up to the practice. I wasn't even ready for practice. Kev, Kev I got on jean shorts. I got on some K-Swiss. And I got on like a tank top, or something like that. Something you would cut grass in. So she like, get in the car. And I'm like, what? Like with case with something? Like, where are we going? So she take me up to the practice. I get out the car. She said, introduce yourself to that coach right there. 
So I'm looking around like, okay, like <laughs> there's like thousands of people out here. Like who are you talking about? So by the time I turn around, the door is still open, Kev. She <laughs> hits the gas with so much force that the door closes. So I don't, I can't even shut the door myself because like she's like, she's like, yo, go introduce yourself to that girl. <laughs> she's gone out of there. I'm like, that. I guess I gotta go introduce myself. So I go introduce myself to the coach, Hall of Fame in Michigan, yeah. James Reynolds. He said, go run a lap, walk a lap, do that for a mile. I said, all right, I'll do that. And then uh, after that, like everybody like all together, like, you know, I'm the only child. So everybody there is like brothers. Everybody's like doing jumping jacks all together. They doing push-ups all together. And I'm just like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> this is dope. So we do all of that stuff. And then my mom come pick me up and I'm like, Ma, guess what? We was doing jumping jacks. Then everybody got together and did push-ups. It was crazy. Everybody was like, one, two, three. <laughs> and everybody was counting, Mom. We got to come back tomorrow. He said, 2.30. They were, I can't be late. We got to be here. I want to be here at 2 so I can be here early. Da, 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 da. She was like, dang, OK. I guess he like it. And wow. So then I was playing ball, man. So was it the brotherhood that, that first attracted you to football? Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't know nothing. They told me to line up at guard. I promise you, Kev, I said, uh, the one or the two, point guard or shooting guard? <laughs> I didn't know what a guard was. <laughs> I didn't know what a tackle was. They was like, tackle. I was like, ain't that what you do with the person who got the ball? They was like, no, you got to line up at right tackle. I was like, right tackle? Like, so there's like left tackles or a correct way to tackle? Like, you mean right tackle? You I'm mean? not doing it correctly? <laughs> I didn't know nothing. You dog. passed the M set and everything else was like I don't know. I no, know math, I'm, science, and technology. But I this. was straight basketball. No baseball, no football, just straight basketball. That's and it's it. funny because a lot of your viral videos are basketball and it's you missing shots obviously on purpose. But if you yeah. grew up playing basketball, you can tell like when I saw that's like, nah, spice jumpers for real. Dog, I, we it, it used to be competitive, man. Out, out in the hood, man. We used to play every day, man. That's back when you used to go outside and then don't come back to your house right. until the street lights about to come. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my mom couldn't text me or, you know, say, like, I'm hooping. Like, I'm right. I'm around the hood. Yeah. I could be down the street. I could be around the corner. All I knew was you, you knew when the light was about to flicker. Right. <laughs> And so, like, all I knew was that I, I got enough time to get home. It might take me 10 minutes. It might make me five. But I'm going to be there when them street lights. Are yeah. On. So tell me about your high school football career. Like, take me through that. Did you take the football quickly? Because, you know, you only had four years and you were a D1 athlete, right? And yeah. most people play that are D1 play that sport their whole life. When did you realize, okay, I, I'm really good at this? Uh, I didn't. I really didn't know, man, until I went to camp. And they offered me a scholarship, but that's not what I went there for. I just went there to just to be great, like just to you know try to win a a, a championship, a, a state championship. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what happened was one of my teammates, who was an upperclassman, he was getting recruited by everybody from Michigan State, Michigan, Penn State, like all of these schools. I was like, dang, he was showing me all his letters. Then I'm green to it, like I don't know, like. I'm going into my sophomore year. And so the upperclassman, he saw my work ethic. Like he saw me in the weight room. He saw me staying out extra. He saw me just wanting to be better. And then, you know, we had a bunch of knuckleheads on the team and stuff like that. So he was like, man, this dude, I like him. He was like, man, you want to go to the Penn State football camp with me? So I was like, who, the me? You, the upperclassman. Yeah. The dude who's in the 12th grade, you asking me, who's in the 10th grade to go to the camp with you? I said, yeah. I said, yeah, before I even asked my mama. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going. Yeah. Penn State camp, yeah, let's do this. And so I go home, I ask my mom, I say, mom, his name is Anthony Morris. I say, Anthony Morris asked me if I wanna go to Penn State camp with him. So she's like, ooh, how much that cost? So I'm like, um, Ah, it cost like uh, three three hundred and eighty dollars. She was like, "Ooh, she looking under couches and stuff, for money or whatever." She got the money together. She was like, "Yeah, you can go." So I'm like, "Bet!" So I go up to the camp, Kev. 
I'm t- Kev, I went bananas at this camp, man. They really? told me to do half, they told me to do some of the drills half speed. I did everything full blast, Kev. <laughs> everything. <laughs> And then they had like all of these drills or whatever, and they had different stations. So one station might be a hundred yards from the other one. So you do one station for 15 minutes, they blow the whistle, then you go to the next one. And sometimes these these stations would be like a hundred yards away. I'm I'm sprinting to every station, first one. I'm wow. trying to be first one every time. And then they uh then they bring everybody in the middle and they talk to everybody, say, hey, we need somebody to demonstrate this next drill. I hop up, I'll demonstrate coach. Every day, every <laughs> drill, dog. I'm telling you, just just full blast with everything. Some of this stuff I don't even know. Like I went out for linebacker and clearly I'm not a linebacker. And they was like, man, who is this dude? So by the time camp was over with, they was like, man, who is this dude right here, man? This dude be hustling. So they offered me a scholarship. They're like, man, you want to come to Penn State? I was like, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. It was like, you want to meet the head coach? I was like, okay. I didn't know who the head coach was, Kev. <laughs> was Joe Paterno the coach at the time? Yes. He's like, I didn't even know who he was. So did you not take any other visits or any of that other stuff? Did you just Penn State nah, all the way? This was my first time. I never even heard of a football camp. Never heard of a football camp. Like, is this, really? this what you do? Like, you got to spend the night? What? <laughs> you stay here for like a whole week? <laughs> And you just you just do football. All right, sign me up. Dude, so I'm just like full blast everything. Yeah. So, you know, I think probably got like two days left. They like, man, you need to come take a look at this kid. So, you know, all the coaches, they riding by on their golf carts. And I see one of the coaches stop and he's just like looking at me. And I'm like, look at dude, look at they they off, they say, Hey man, let's go meet Joe Paterno. So I was like, All right, whoever this guy is, let's just go meet him. <laughs> cool. So they offered me a scholarship right there at camp. So they like, hey, you want to come to Penn State? They was all excited about it. I was like, all right, like, let's do it. <laughs> but I didn't cool know like, what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. All I knew was that I was coachable. Anything yeah. you tell me to do, you tell me to run through a brick wall, I'm running through that one, like, where the next one at? Want to take a break from the show real quick to talk to you about Blue Chew. Get your penis the help it deserves. You understand me? This year, it's time to get off the couch and get back into the bedroom. Blue Chew can help. Guys, we know that confidence can take you far in life. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever the opportunity arises. Uh huh. That means your penis will arise too. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of your licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped to you direct in a discreet package. Last night, I tossed me in a Blue Chew. Yeah, man. Sex was on the plan, but I didn't know. Had a long day of writing and writing and rewriting. And, you know, creative energy is still energy. And I had worked out that morning. But, you know, Coochie was on the horizon. And I just need a little bump so that I could hump. And Blue Chew saved the day. All right? And I want you to have that same experience. So, if you can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code STAGE at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code STAGE to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. And now back to the show. Like let's, that's, that, that was me, dog. Just full blast with everything. So let's that's go to my Penn, personality. Let's get to Penn State. What was that like? Because a lot of athletes who make it to the NFL like yourself, they enjoy their college years sometimes more than their NFL years. Uh, yeah. what, what was what was that experience? Because you know, Happy Valley is it's a college town. You know, Penn State is a you know one of the top programs. You know, pretty much year in year out. What was that experience like? This a it's a drinking town with a football problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what they say. But dog, I man, it was so different from the city. You know, it had mountains and cows and 
me and squirrels be running up to you. That's why you call it Happy Valley, man. It's like you, like a, a Disney fairy or something like that. Yeah. Like, because usually in the hood, don't know squirrels run up to you, man. Those squirrels be up out of there, man. But it was just such a different experience, man. And I didn't know how good I was. I just wanted to compete. I just wanted to start. I just want to get a national championship, man. But my first visit there, uh, I was with Jay Paterno, Joe's son. That's who recruited me. And uh, he was showing me around campus. And I was just like, yeah, this is cool. I was like, where the Q's at, though? <laughs> I didn't know where the Q's at. Because, I, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to be a, a mega star. So you five. knew about that already? Yeah, because some of my coaches were Q's. In high and, school? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And, and then um, my quarterback, his dad, he was a Q and he bought me my first pair of cleats. So it seemed like all these positive dudes who were like father figures to me were Qs. Yeah. So I was like, dog, I need, I need to get down, man. Like where, where are the Qs here? So you was he in was Penn like, State yeah. hopping, licking the air. You was Whoa. out there. Whoa, licking the air, who be doing <laughs> you that? You know Qs be licking, Spice. They be, there be a lot of tongue flicking. Hey man, you can't put that on all of us. I, you can't put that so on. You, never, you never flicked your tongue? What? <laughs> Hey man, we had, hey listen here, man. I'm just trying to tell you about my experience. Man. <laughs> so this is really interesting because most NFL or NBA pro athletes, they are like driven. I am going to the league. You were just really committed to the work. When do you realize, yeah. oh snap, I my career might be able to go past college. I might be able to do this professionally. I didn't know this till like my junior year. Um, it was like two instances. The first instance was um, my coach, he pulled me over to the side and because my grades were slipping. And I got to the point where, you know, since middle school, I was going to summer school and I was just going to school all year round, man. Middle school, high school. Then I get to college and I'm just like, man, I'm I'm drained, like I'm burnt out. Right. So I, was, I wasn't even going to class, man. I'll show up for the test. And, you know, just gets like some cliff notes the night before and try right. to make it that way. But coach pulled me over to the side. He said, man, you messing with greatness. He said, man, you you got a chance to go to the NFL. And I was like, as the National Football League? That's what you're talking about? <laughs> I was like, man, okay, like for real? Like I, I was just, dude, I was in a, in a fog, man. Yeah. I just wanted to, you know, be the best in a weight room, be the best in a classroom. But at, at that point, I was like, I was getting tired. And I was just like, especially with class. Like I love football, I love lifting weights and all that stuff. But class, I was just like, man, I'm just, I, I can't do it, man. So he was like, man, you got a shot. So I was like, really? So um, fast forward past the season, uh, get to the draft. So I see that the Pittsburgh Steelers, they draft like a center or something like that from Purdue. So I'm like, I know they saw that Penn State game. <laughs> I know they saw that. I had a game. Against I mean, him? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it was some stuff I was doing where I was like, you know how you do something and you're like, man, I wonder if I can do this in the game. Like, I'm doing it. Like, man, I am really lifting this guy off his feet with one arm. <laughs> I can't wait to watch this on film. Right. And so I'm like, yo, if they drafted him in the third round, I know I at least got to go second or first. <laughs> so I, listen. So I dominating had, somebody man, that man. got <laughs> dominating somebody that got drafted, were you like, I know if they got him, I'm in there for sure. I know I got to be the tops. <laughs> If they if this this they drafted him in the third, not saying he was sorry and then like it right. wasn't his fault. Kev. It was not his fault. Listen, the game before we played Ohio State, and um my guy who played DB, Adam Talaferro, he went for a tackle with his head down, and the guy's knee came and like jolted his neck back, and they didn't think he was ever gonna walk again. Like he was just laid on the field motionless. And you know, sometimes where people get carted off in the stretcher, they put the, the thumbs up, like, I'm okay. He couldn't even do that. Oh, wow. So, like, we was like, man. And so, like, the next game was Purdue. And so, I I played lights out. I mean, it was tears in my eyes the whole game. So, it wasn't dude fault. You were but, you were crying and lifted grown men off the ground? Which, yeah. Oh, this is good. It, like, high school <laughs> pro, I never felt like how I did for this game. Yeah. Like, I, was, I was on charge. 
on charge, like without an energy drink. I didn't need <laughs> nothing. Dog, I was I was on 10 to every play. So and you so, when you actually got drafted, you you went second round, right? Yeah. So what did that feel like? Was it a foregone conclusion? Did you have any doubt or or were you like, oh, no, nah, I'm pretty sure I'm getting drafted and I'm pretty sure I should go around this time? Well, before all of that, uh, I I was privileged enough to get invited to play in the Senior Bowl. Mm. And the Senior Bowl, that's like the top bowl that you can play, the top all-star game that you can play. And usually it's like a 95% chance, maybe even higher, that if you play in this Senior Bowl or you get invited, that you're probably going to get drafted. Okay. And so um, one of my homeboys, who he's an agent right now, Shafi Fields, he played in the Senior Bowl and did not get drafted. Oh, so snap. I'm like, yo, there's a chance that I can play in the senior bowl, even though I had a great practice. I was balling in practice too. Um, there's a chance that I probably won't get drafted too. Like I'm 5'11, everybody talking about my height and all that. Like, oh man, if you were 6'2, man, we'd draft you in the first top 10 picks. But if that and I, but I'm like, but I'm not. And then there's nothing I can do about my height. And also, I'm like over six feet with my cleats on, but y'all want to measure me. <laughs> with my shoes off like what is that what is that about i'm not gonna argue with you but okay but anyways i didn't know that i was gonna get drafted and that year i was the 10th rated defensive tackle and so they took nine defensive tackles it was like a record they took them like fast off the board it was still like 10 picks left in the first round so i'm like of these 10 teams well actually it was nine teams because one team had two picks uh, of these teams, if they needed a defensive tackle, I should be the next one off the board. Mm. So I'm there. I'm up at Penn State uh, for the draft. I'm watching it and everything. And then um, I see the Raiders had the last two picks. So then I'm like, man, it's a chance that I could go to the Raiders because I talked to the Raiders at the Senior Bowl or at the Combine. Mm. And they was like, we will draft you in a heartbeat. So I'm like, Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Okay. And this is the defensive coordinator. Mm, so okay. I'm like, all right, bet. So they had the last two picks in the first. So I'm like, all right, I, I might be going to, I might be going to Oakland. Nah, they didn't draft me, man. They drafted uh, Namdi Asamoa, who's a good player. Yep. And Tyler Brayton out of Colorado, who's a good player too. But I, so after that, I had no idea where I was going. I didn't know I was going second round, third round, fourth. Like I didn't know. I was projected to go fourth. Mm. But I ended up going to San Francisco with the 57th pick, which was dope. So they call you. Is it, is it really like like we see on TV? Like they call you and be like, hey, Spice, this is the general manager or the coach. And yep. do you remember that conversation? Yeah, but mine was <laughs> – I got a, you know, I got a whole funny story about that, man. Oh, so please tell us. During that day, I got a lot of prank calls from a lot of my homeboys. So they, <laughs> oh, no. they was calling me. And this was the time when we had the flip phone where you could flip it when you hang up on people. <laughs> so my boys called me like, hey, this is Randy Balsher, the uh, GM for Seattle Seahawks. We want to take you in the draft, whatever. So I'm like, oh, for real? They're like, no, nah, no, nah, this Harold, man, what's up? <laughs> So I'm like, man, come on, dog. Like, I got to save my battery. And y'all y'all playing around, dog. So I'm hanging the phone up, like, you know, every 20 minutes, seemed like. So then we get to the 57th pick. And um, on the draft, they cut to commercial break. So um, I'm on the phone. The GM for the Niners is calling me, Terry Donahue. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, we want to take you with the 57th pick. I'm like, oh, OK, Harold. Flick. <laughs> Hang the phone up on the GM, dog. So he called me back. <laughs> he like, hey, we want to take you with the 57 pick. This is Terry Donahue, San Francisco 49. So I'm like, for real? And so I didn't, like Chris Berman wasn't like, and with the 57 pick, the, you know, uh, out of Penn State, San Francisco 49 to select Anthony Adams, whatever. So I didn't, I didn't get that because it was in commercial break. Mm. So I got drafted during a commercial break. So I'm like, dang, like this is for real, like this is happening. And so then I didn't believe it until I saw my the name go on the bottom line of the ticker. Oh like wow! Penn State. I'm like, oh snap! Like this is like really happening. <laughs> and so I'm trying to like piece everything together. Like this is not Harold. Like this is really. <laughs> 
Terry Donahue, like really telling me that I'm going to the 49ers. So I'm like, oh, he's like, yeah, we got to get you a flight. You got to be here tomorrow, da, 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 da. So I'm up at Penn State. All I got is workout clothes. And so we, we got to do like a press conference and all of this stuff. So I'm like, man, how am I going to get me a suit? I got drafted at probably like 7 p.m. Mall closed at 8. <laughs> so I go to the mall, dog. I'm like, oh, man. Like, I need to find, like, something. So I get, like, some Dockers, some khakis or whatever. They didn't have no suit jackets that fit me. So I'm like, man, all I got is these Dockers. I probably got to wear, like, a collared shirt or something like that. This is about to be all bad. <laughs> so I end up borrowing my uh, defensive lineman, my, my coach. I borrow his suit jacket. It's the most pieced together terrible suit that you ever want to see in your life dog like it was so bad so bad i don't know i i hope if anybody got a picture of that that they burn it it is so bad i'm gonna have the team research that and see if we can go uh, through getty images and, uh, and get your draft day suit oh uh, it is it is the worst suit i ever pieced together in my life so you played d tackle in in the nfl and college is that the same you played in high school as well yeah, I played defensive tackle and I played offensive tackle too. So what is the defensive tackle's job for those who don't play football? To tackle whoever got the ball. So uh, if he, if the quarterback handed off to the running back, go tackle him. If the quarterback still got the ball in his hand, go sack him. But I played nose guard, so my domain is the A-gap. Okay. So, uh, and I played in a 4-3, so I'm a gap shooter. So I got a man in the A-gap, and I got to be there in my gap because when you play 4-3, uh, everybody got to be technique sound. Okay. Like if the, if the defensive tackle, the three technique, I'm the one technique. So it goes in numbers. Okay. The A-gap is one. Then the B-gap is three. Then you got five, then you got seven, then you got nine. That's for the DNs. So I'm in a one technique. The three technique got the, got the B-gap. So everybody has their gap. And if you're outside of your gap, then that messes with the integrity of the defense. And a lot of guys, or a lot of offense, they want to run in the heart of the defense, which is straight up the middle. Mm. So if I'm not in my A-gap, then the running back can just go run in the A-gap and score a touchdown. So uh, so you got to basically plug that hole up. That's it. And you tackle him, and if you can't tackle him, just make sure he can't run through here. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's so simple. Yeah, it's so hard to do. Well, somebody else is 300 pounds, and their job is to make sure you can't do that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They don't want to be moved. I don't want to be moved. And then we get in car accidents. Right, right, right. Because that's all it, that's all football is, like many car. Have you ever gotten to a car accident? I have. So that's what it's like, like just 60 times a game. Like you probably play 60 plays. And you probably go a little bit over, but sometimes it's a penalty and those don't count. But mm. you, your neck still go right. back like that when you like that count against your brain. But it's like 60 car accidents. Yeah. So you, you know what you felt like after you got in that car accident. So what? Let, let's talk about that's that. What, what you feel like the day after. What What's that mental and physical toll on, on your body, you know, being in the NFL that Monday after? Like, what does that feel like after 60 car accidents? I want to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about ExpressVPN. Listen, I'm a happily married man. And sometimes in the bedroom, I need a little help. And I need to look for a certain position or a certain thing to spice it up. And other times my kids have my laptop and I don't want them to search what I searched or see what I searched. And that's why I like ExpressVPN. I know most of you are probably thinking, why don't you use incognito mode? Let me tell you something. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. Okay. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browser history. The internet service provider can still see every single website you ever visited. That's why even when I'm at home, I never go online without using Express. VPN. It doesn't matter who your internet service provider is. ISPs in the U.S. can legally sell your information to ad companies. And that's why you're getting your whole Instagram all jacked up. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure service so ISPs can't see the sites you visit. And therefore, your browsing history is secret. Okay, ExpressVPN also keeps all your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the time, I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN. On. It runs seamlessly in the background. It's so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV. So there's no excuse for you not to be using it. 
Protect your online activity today with a VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit my exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash stage, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash stage, expressvpn.com slash stage to learn more. And now back to the show. Yeah, you feel very sore, very weak. and uh, But the thing is, you got to snap out of it. Like you got to get that, that lactic acid, like build up. You got to get it out of your body. So the next day, uh, I used to box. I used to run. I used to get in the hot tub, cold tub. I used to stretch. I used to do a lot of stuff. And, um, but what you don't realize is how you're going to feel when you're done. Like when you retire, Yeah. Like you, you don't realize that your finger is going to look like this for the rest of your life or like all the rest of your fingers. Like this is my, finger just like my hand just straight that is your the normal disposition of your hand like yeah look at my middle finger dude like it is doesn't look like a middle finger at all it is it's... i'm throwing i'm throwing up the west side and i'm not doing it my fingers are throwing up the west side and i'm not physically telling my fingers to throw up my set man i'm throwing up sets and i'm not even really doing it <laughs> but this is the thing though kev when you plan you don't care about none of that yeah like, like i cross that bridge when i get to it right when i'm when i'm 40 when i'm you know 38 and decide to be done then that's when i worry about it but when it's here when you retire you be like dang dog this is this is madness like i went to see a doctor the doctor said physically your body is like 56. wow and at this time i was like 38. I was Dang. like, what? It's crazy, man. But that's what you signed up for. So you play for the, the Niners and the Bears. You retire. What's the thought that made you realize I might be done for real? Man, when you in the league, you see so much stuff, man. I've seen a guy get traded when we're stretching in preseason practice. Oh I've seen gosh. a guy get the tap on the shoulder. And he, they were like, yeah, make sure you don't practice today and go get your playbook. <laughs> God, we dog. we had a preseason game against the Oakland Raiders. I seen somebody get traded in the locker room. He's getting ready to put his shoulder pads on to go out and play against the Oakland Raiders. And they said, don't worry about putting your shoulder pads on. Get your playbook. You just got traded. So, you know, when you're in the league so long, you can see the writing on the wall. Yeah. I knew the writing was on the wall my ninth year where I was just like, man, I didn't know I was going to go out like this. And even when I was with the 49ers, my fourth year, I saw how my practice time was. I saw how my playing time was. I had U-Haul boxes in my apartment in October. Season is over with in January. <laughs> I already knew. I said, man, we we about to be out of here. I already know. They switched my position. I was playing defensive end. Oh. I'm 5'11 playing defensive end. I'm like, yeah. It's a wrap. I know it's coming. But, you know, when you turn 30 in the NFL and you play on the line, you consider old. Like, you're used goods. And then if you're like me, I didn't go all pro. I wasn't a pro bowler. I'm not a potential Hall of Fame or whatever. So I knew, like, going to another team was going to be hard. And yeah. even then, I was going to sign, like, a one-year deal. And I knew all the scenarios where they were going to sign me if one of their defensive tackles got hurt. And so say I'm signed with the Seattle Seahawks. I got to go all the way out to the West Coast. And then what's going to happen is I'll, they'll probably sign me for three weeks. They'll, they'll sign me for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what's going to happen is I'll probably start the first three weeks because one of their defensive tackles got hurt. And then he gets healthy. And then he's like, hey, you know what? I can go week four. Go out to practice. He looks good. So then by the time week four show up, they're going to start him. And then you're going to be inactive for that game. And then right after that, you're going to get released. And so Dang. what happens is you are, you know, uh, 29, you're 30, 31. And so now you got a family and all that stuff. So you're like, okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to call my wife. Hey, everything going good down here. I've been starting the last three weeks. You know what? Get the kids together. Let's uproot the family. Bring everybody out here. I was looking for a house. I got this good real estate agent. We got a house that's big enough for us. We could, you know, rent this out for a year and then see what happened. 
then you get released like week four yeah. after you done told your family to come on out here or whatever. So I was like, instead of doing that, I'm just going to retire. I'm just going to stay out here in Chicago and see what happens. So for those of, the, those of you who haven't seen the video, Spice has the most legendary retirement statement in the history of the world. <laughs> Tell us about your retirement announcement because it was very non-traditional. So at this stage, I had already been taking a YouTube. I started putting up videos and stuff like that. So this particular video, I was like, man, I want to do something different. I was like, I know <laughs> I'm not the Peyton Manning of the world. I'm not, you know, all these uh, Hall of Fame athletes or whatever, when they had a retirement, it's just like all type of press come up and everybody's there. I know when I retire, it's going to be like, oh, okay. Nobody even going to write about it. <laughs> so I was like, man, I'm just going to do a video, put it up on YouTube and just have fun with it, whatever. So I put it up, it was very self-deprecating. And uh, so after I hit return on the keyboard, Kev, uh, I get an uh, email from ESPN assignment desk. They're like, hey, can we use your video? So I type back like, yeah, go ahead, that's cool. So then I get up from my office, I walk into the living room and Trey Wingo is talking about it on ESPN. Oh, I'm like, snap. I'm like, what? Like everything was happening so fast. So I, I watched the, the the segment where he was talking about the video that I just uploaded and I go back into the office. I'm like, man, this is good. Like, that happened fast. So I go to check my email on Yahoo. I'm on the first page. Oh, snap. And it says um, Anthony Spice Adams, the greatest NFL free agent in the world, like retires. I'm like, Man, this is then my phone started going crazy. Everybody started calling, yo, you see ESPN? Yo, I just checked my email and you on the dog on email, dog. Like it was <laughs> it was wild. It was wild for like, you know, at least a whole week, man. Joint, everybody was on like all the like local news stations and all that. Like it was it was crazy. And you had already went viral for stuff NFL free agents say. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is back to back if like time wise? Uh, no, I had put that out. Then I put out like a rap video. Then I put up like all this other different stuff. But when I put that out, that went, the retirement video went crazy. Yeah. It went crazy. And now when I watch it, cause I edited it myself and iMovie and stuff like that. I was, I'm looking at the transitions and I'm like, oh, <laughs> terrible. And the joint was like, I think it was like five minutes. So I'm like, dog, I could have really did all this in like two. Now I'm looking at like how I'm dissolving things. And I'm like, oh, this is so trash. This is so, you can see like flashes from other videos I had in there. I was like, oh, this is so bad, so bad. So how when did- I look at it now, Kev, I cringe. Oh no, we're gonna put it up I'm right on. It's like, gonna be playing uh, over you talking right now. You're gonna get at least 30 so seconds. Bad. Matter of fact, we it might stop the so interview bad. and play all five minutes. <laughs> And make people it suffer through so all bad <laughs> all five minutes. Just like that, from an editing perspective, <laughs> like now that I know what I'm doing, because everything was just trial and error with me, man. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna sit here and learn this iMovie. And it was like, you don't got Final Cut. I'm like, what? That's another thing. In it? Yeah, you don't have Premiere. I'm like, what? There's another thing that I have to learn. And what happens is, man, my kids. I look up. My kids is just born. Now they eight years old because I've been in the dungeon trying to figure out how to do these jump cuts and dissolve and then like, I'm Kev, you know how it is, man. Oh, man. You, you sit down and like you start getting all these different ideas. Like, oh man, I could use this song. I could oh, do this. Oh yeah. Ah, like I'm in here for hours. So that's hours. interesting, right? Because most NFL players their next career is something in the NFL, either coaching or in the yeah. broadcast booth or something related to the sport. You you went in a totally different direction. Was that any part of your plan? Did you know what you were going to do after you retired? Or were you just no. like, hey, man, I might stick with this? Dude, I had absolutely no idea, man. I had no plan. And what's crazy is I got a production company called No Plan Productions because mm. that's what I, I had no plan. I didn't know what to do. I, I really... Uh, I started going back to school and I got my executive MBA from George Washington. So I started that while I was playing in like 2010. And then um, I got, uh, I retired 2012 
And then I got my executive master's 2013. So I thought I was gonna go into some some form of business. But um, yeah, I, I had no idea what I was gonna do. And what's crazy is uh, I always had this plan where it's like, if I ever retire, I wanna set some money aside to give me two years, you know, to be able to pay bills and try to find out what I need to do. And so the time had come. I had got that call at Disney World, like, hey, we're gonna release your big guy. I was like, God, dog. So that was a whole nother story. But then once I had retired, I was like, man, what am I gonna do, dog? Like, I didn't know. So I uh, got a job with a uh, Big Ten Network and I started doing uh, analyst work. And then we did this show called Big Ten Tailgate. Well, Kev, how much time we got, dude? Spice, you, Kev. you tell me the story. You tell Kev. me the story, Spice. I had, <laughs> I can't even get it out. I had a tryout for a Big Ten Network and I did so bad, Kev. <laughs> It was if 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 you thought it was cringeworthy for my editing, oh my gosh! What what is what was you yeah, doing wrong? I was so bad at this tryout, dog. So bad. Let me tell you what happened, Kev. They gave me a CD because that's what they used at that time. They gave me a CD. They said, "Look at this Ohio State game versus Indiana." You tell us three plays that were pivotal, that was important plays that changed the trajectory of the game. I said, all right, cool. Let me dissect this CD, do the CD in, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, that's my play, that's my play. So I write down the plays. I said, at 151 in the game, this right here changed it. Then here, then here, bam, send it in. They say, all right, now we're gonna act like everything is live. We're gonna sit you down next to my man, Mike Hall, and we're gonna go over these plays. So I'm on the desk, the desk where they do the Big Ten Network. And Mike Hall is like, yeah, da 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 da. Hey, we're here at Big Ten Network. We got Spice Adams with us. Spice, take us over the plays. I'm thinking we're gonna go back and forth. Like we are like, like live. And so uh, he's like, I'm like, yeah, okay. Let's go over the play. They plan to play already. Like you could see the play. I'm supposed to be talking. So I'm like, yeah, let's let's go over these plays. You you don't have anything, Mike? No? <laughs> it's by this time it's only like the second play already. Kid. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out where I am in my notes. I'm like, yeah, so I'm not even looking at the play, Kev. I'm looking at my notes. So I'm like, on this play, you could see Gerald Anderson throws the pass. And from this pass. This dude got like seven, 16, no, hold on. Let's say 65 yards. He got 65 yards on Kev, <laughs> the plays are already over with. I'm still talking about the play, but the camera is like back on me now. So I'm like, yeah, dude got like 65 yards. That was crazy. On to the next play. So Tavarius Simpson, he got like 17 plays on the end around. <laughs> which I don't even know why you would call that play. It's crazy. Uh, so yeah, back to you guys in the studio. I am the guy in the studio. I'm already in the studio. I'm saying back to you guys in the studio as if I'm a like sideline reporter. So I'm like, yeah, back to you guys in the studio. And Mike is like, so look, I'm only supposed to talk about Ohio State, Indiana. That, that was my job. So then Mike is like, hey, man, great analogy of the game, whatever, da, da, da. Tell me about Purdue's second string quarterback. Kev, there, there are 14 teams in the, in the Big Ten. All they told me was Ohio State, Indiana. That's all I know <laughs> because that's, that's what I studied. This man say, tell me about Purdue's second string quarterback. Kev, I'm like, hey, he's second string. He should be starting. But I don't know why he ain't for what, what, whatever reason. The coaches got him second string. <laughs> that man better get it together. <laughs> what you think, Mike? He's like, yeah. So tell me about the um, the defensive coordinator at Northwestern. I'm like, Mike, in my head, I'm like, Mike, I'm going to punch you right in your face. They said Ohio State, Indiana. Ask me some Ohio State, Indiana questions, which I don't know that either, but 
ask me some of those, my guy. And so he just keeps going on and on. What do you think about Penn State? I'm like, ah, I graduated from Penn State. I should at least know a player or two. Hey, man, tell me about Michael Robinson. Good player. Never seen him play in my life, Kev. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, yeah, he's a good player, man. You know, um, when he backpedal, he plays quarterback, Kev. <laughs> Quarterbacks don't backpedal. Oh my God. When, when he backpedals, what he really wants to do is he wants to break on the ball because yeah, you got to trust what your defensive lineman is going to do up front, which leads me to another situation of ice cream. Why do, why do people like vanilla when you can get chocolate? Dog, it was so bad. Dog. I just started talking about anything after a while. You know how you can hear yourself bomb? <laughs> yes. It's the worst feeling in the world. Like, you know, you sometimes you start out doing comedy and it don't go over well. I definitely bombed. Yeah, so I was bombing on like, if this was live TV, I, I would have never been on TV again ever. Not live. Oh. But anywho, after that debacle, <laughs> the producer said, yeah, you know, I'm gonna give you another chance, man. You know, really? You you fresh off like I really did I did kind of good I'm exaggerating like the Ohio State Indiana I, I kind of did okay, but he was like all right you know I'm gonna give you another chance man here take these CDs home, study these so I come back bomb even <laughs> worse matter of fact worser is not even a word I bomb worser Kev so then he was like you know what man I'm I'm, I'm real quick with the lies too like yeah oh man you know, Kevin. Kevin Fredericks? Oh, yeah, man. One of the greatest linebackers I've ever seen in my life. The way that he diagnosed the plays. Oh, man. You're going to want him on your team. So at this stage, like, I'm like, I already know what to expect. So I'm just coming, like, with, with anything that pop up in my head. Oh, yeah. You talking about the field goal kicker? Oh, man. The way he, he really stretches his hamstring before the play. I, I watched. He's stretching his hamstring. So I knew that this kick was going to be crazy. So the second time I did a little better, but he was just like, yeah, uh, we really like your personality more so than anything else. So if we could find something for you to do, we're gonna circle back. Mm. So I was, I was like, oh, okay, I already know what that's code for. Yeah, you're not gonna call me back. But he ended up calling me back and saying, hey, look, we got this show that we want you to do called Big Ten Tailgate, and we're, we can use your personality. So I'm like, all right, bet. So yeah. I did that for like three years, man. But I really had no plan, man. And, so, uh, I mean- That bombing taught me a lot. From there, I mean, you you did that. You work with the Bears now. You were on Ballers. You're on a Great American Baking Show. You're on a pod, a big podcast with Shaq. I mean, almost all of that is your personality, though. Yeah, which is crazy, man. I never thought that you know you could kind of make a living off of that, but um, I have, man. And uh, what's so what's so awesome about it, man, is like I'm just being me. Yeah. And so I'm getting paid just to be me. Like, I don't have to put on a suit and get behind the desk and, you know, talk about X's and O's or talk about, you know, stuff that I'm really not that passionate about. And uh, I just get a chance to just be me. And a lot of these companies and a lot of these brands, that's what they want anyway. Yeah. So it's, 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 a, it's a good feeling, man. And tell us about how you, you're known for introducing comedians to Anita Baker through your videos. How, how is that... <laughs> How did you decide on ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba? why did you use that clip for people falling and funny stuff happening? It's just like, <laughs> you know, when you hear the ending credits to curb your enthusiasm, yes. it's just like, you know, something went wrong or, you know, somebody's extremely sad. That's what the jingle kind of reminds me of. Yeah. It's just like when you run into the ice cream truck, <laughs> and you just got the dollar that you just found four quarters. You just found it and you run into the ice cream truck and the ice cream truck leaves, but not only leaves, like usually ice cream dr trucks drive slow, but the ice cream truck is driving <laughs> 50 miles per hour. So there's absolutely no way you're going to catch it. And all you can hear is ba -ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba. You need to go on a diet. <laughs> Spice, I want to ask you right now before we close. When we got to close? We got to close, Spice. You can keep going, man. I know you're busy. I want forgiveness from no, you. absolutely not. For Anita Baker. Nope. Why, Spice, how long must I suffer? 
I, it's going on know, four man. years. I don't know. You you got to suffer just like I had to suffer at Big Ten Network. <laughs> I'm not the Kev. only black person who didn't know, Spice. There's a Kev. lot of us. I'm about to change the subject. It is the worst thing in the world for a play to be going on and you're talking about the wrong play. <laughs> <laughs> and then the oh. camera is on you. You're looking at this camera. As a matter of fact, you're not even looking at this camera. Your head is down looking at the notes because you figure like a video is playing, <laughs> but you don't even know the video that's being played. Oh, that's so bad. All right, so bad. before I let you go, Spice, we got Kev's top 10. Okay, we asked, you don't have to let me go. I'm a, I, I, I gotta let you go. Patreon viewers, they gotta, they gotta get it. <laughs> oh, gotta oh, get it. One more thing I forgot. Y'all about, about to get this work. I'm here all day. <laughs> uh, my producers are in my ear. What was it, Marquita? I can't read the sign. Hey man. Oh, versus, versus. I ain't got to go nowhere. Versus. Versus is dope. How? I love versus. I, exactly. I know this, but the people might not know this. <laughs> You did not even know Atheon prior to you guys doing post immediately finishing versus a yep. live recap in costume and improv. Please tell us how that happened. The Teddy Riley and Babyface versus the first one. I I ended up doing a video on it. And Ape was cracking up at it, man. He said, "Man, we gotta, we gotta do a spoof on this, man. If you, if you down." So I'm like, "All right, yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna put together this video, then I'm gonna post it." He like, "All right, yeah, do that." And then we gonna come up with our own video. So he did a video, and then he was like, "Man, you know what? We should just go live and do it." So now you, you know, live could use two people. Yeah. So I'm like, "All right, bet. Like, let's do it, man." Ape and I crack it. Right. right. Ape and I crack who had his own show. Own show you know, on Ape Fox. Ape who is who is on like MTV doing all that. I'm like, Ape, yeah, let's do it. So we get on live and we do the the uh the baby face and Teddy Riley. And then I don't know, the next week come it was somebody else. And so I was looking through um like all of my costumes that I kept like over the years. I was like, I think I got that. Like, let's let's do the next one. So the next thing you know, we we be in the comments looking at verses and everybody's like, yo, we can't wait for the wrap up show with Spice and Atheon. And then it just became a thing. Yeah. And like we did it for almost like a year and a half. Man. It, it was crazy. But it started out just like us reaching out to each other in the DM, just like, yo, we think this 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 would be funny, dog. Are you down? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. It was just like just that simple. And I we had did about 12 or 15 different verses without even meeting each other. Wow. My first time meeting him was like probably after we did, you know, multiple verses. It was crazy. That is that is probably the most pandemic story I've 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 heard. That that could only happen during during the pandemic. Prior to that, you both were probably too busy to to do that, but we were stuck at the house. And now y'all are legendary status even more than you already were. Okay, yeah, man, top 10, crazy. Spice. All we ask is that you be honest. Number one, who's your favorite person? <laughs> what? Who's your favorite person? Jesus. <laughs> what was one of your happiest moments? Uh, getting drafted. Okay, what about one of your saddest moments? <laughs> getting released. <laughs> At Disney World. <laughs> With the, the happiest, kids. The happiest place on earth, on the phone like this. Huh? <laughs> Say that one more time. Say, we're going to let you go. Let me go where? I'm going wherever you're going, coach. Where are we going? Nah, big guy. Uh, like, you're done. You're done. You're released. Released. <laughs> released from what exactly? <laughs> the team. You're released from the team. Okay. Grits. Sugar. Salt. Or... All day, twice on Sunday, people who put sugar in their grits are the devil. Wow, the devil! Yeah, I went there. The I devil. Went there. I went there. Sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie? Kev, <laughs> I thought I had you with me for a second. I am from Detroit. <laughs> you know the answer to this. You know what I put on my grits? 
<laughs> and you know there's no such thing as pumpkin pie. It's the- almost as like somebody saying turkey bacon. There's no such thing. <laughs> there's no such thing. Anita Baker or Patty LaBelle? Oh, now we get somewhere. I got to go with Anita Baker. Okay. I will fight somebody over Anita. Me too. I'll I fight will. so many. I love this. Kev, so. shut up, okay. please. Okay. Do you know who Patty LaBelle is? <laughs> yes. Okay, I had to ask. <laughs> Where are my background back? singers? It's a, it's a legitimate <laughs> question. It's almost time for that. Okay, favorite black saying? There's so many. They are. Uh, the one I heard the most is either going to be in or out. That was, I'm telling you, you know how you hear the, uh, who wants to be a millionaire, that boom, dun, dun, that stuff start going off in your head. Like, dang, do I want to be, because if you in, you in all day. But if yes. you're out, you're out all day. Yeah. So I, was, I was out every time. What excites you? Uh, probably living vicariously through my kids. Mm. Yeah, man. Like all the stuff that I wasn't able to do, I do it with them. And I'm just like, I don't even know if they're excited about it. I'll be excited for them. <laughs> yeah. <about it. laughs> like these, these kids, man, they done been to Disney World multiple times, bro. <laughs> multiple, like more than once. <sighs> I didn't go to Disney World, dog, till I was like 21. Yeah. I, know I, didn't, that, leave, right? I didn't get a passport till I was like 25. We live the same life. Dude, they got passports. They didn't, man, they didn't been to London. They didn't been to the Bahamas. They didn't been somewhere. Every, they got stamps. Yeah. Must be no. nice to be your child. Man, it is. <laughs> what bores you? Bores? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. People who don't know Anita Baker bores me. It bored. Like, how can you live your life and not know who Anita Baker is? Man, woman, child, or beast? How? How do you not? That bores me, man. Last question. Lectures, maybe. <laughs> Lectures. Lectures bore me. Okay. What do you want your legacy to be? Just a hardworking dad. It don't get no better than that. Yeah. You see a hardworking dad. Dude, they trying to make it happen. Whatever the case is, if they welders, if they work with a lawn service, they just trying to make it happen. Yeah. That's all we're trying to do. We all like the same person, just different boat. Like, same story, different chapter. Actually, bonus question for you. How did you get the nickname Spice? Ooh, man. How much time we got? <laughs> just I long enough. I know you got to go. I got, to go. <laughs> I got All right, real quick. Real quick. Okay. Uh there was like seven Anthony's on a high school football team. I, I made number seven. So they was like, man, no, we can't say Anthony and then seven people turn around. Right. <laughs> so we got to, we got to come up with a nickname. So I had these braids in my hair that resembled the West Coast rapper Spice One. So they said, we're going to call you Spice. I said, no, y'all gonna call me Anthony. Like I, that's, that's not my name. And so I was a freshman. So, you know, all the upperclassmen was like, oh, Spice, look at Spice One. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, dog. So by the thousandth time somebody called me that, I finally asked, like, what, man? So, but then fast forward to me starting on the offensive line, I would get down in my stance and to alert me that I had to go pull and block the defensive end or turn up and block the linebacker. They would say, spice, spice, the main ingredient. So I became spice, the main ingredient. Ah, that one's, I like the second one. You Okay. Because you well, are, you know, you're the main ingredient. And sugar's sugar. the main ingredient in grits. It All is right. not. Before it we let not. you go, Spice, let the people know where they can find you at. I'm at the crib. <laughs> in a nice mansion in suburban Chicago. With Spice a Adams mo- everywhere. <laughs> Spice Adams everywhere. I'm going to cut you off because uh, you're getting ridiculous. Spiceadams.com. Shop.spiceadams.com. Get some merch. And I try to keep everything consistent. Spice Adams, TikTok, and... Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest for Spice Out of Recipe. Yeah. Ladies and no gentlemen, Pinterest, I'm on Pinterest. I designed my office. I had my whole board. I had the color schemes. I had a great yeah, time. Etsy. Oh, yeah. Etsy, Etsy yeah. I get my little crafts. Mm-hmm. I don't mind it. <laughs> hey, where are you going after this? Uh, Today? Yeah, today. I got more interviews, and then I'm coming back here to shoot Keep Your Distance. What time? What time you go? I got Tad in 20 minutes.
Ooh, yeah, I'm about to keep you for 30. <laughs> so look, when I was born, uh, I didn't even want like Similac or nothing. So my mom just started feeding me raisins. Like at a, I didn't even had teeth. How Ladies and gentlemen, raisins? thank you for watching, coming to the stage. That's been Spice Adams. I've been Kev on stage. You can watch full unedited versions of these interviews on the Kev on stage studio streaming service. Otherwise, you can watch them on YouTube, Facebook, or wherever podcasts are found. Much love to our guy, Spice Adams, for pulling up today. Best of luck to you with everything. No plan production and all I'll that. Down? You're down, how can Spice. I, how, how can I be down and come in and, and do some interviews at Kevin Spice? I'm going to hit you on the side. I got a plan. I got a whole uh, plan. You know, I need mean, when I'm in town, I need to just stop by come, the hills because that's where you at. Up. Where they got the they got the the barn wood on the outside of the building, <laughs> so it ain't no telling what's on the inside. Ain't pull, no ain't no telling what's on. you got a leather couch in the background just for no particular reason at all. I'm sure that leather couch costs <laughs> thousands of dollars. Set, that's IKEA, man. The set deck. Wow, wow. <laughs> People spend thousands in IKEA. Spice Adams, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, okay. Now I'm done. I guess. Appreciate you. You don't want me to talk about your thousands? Wow. Okay. Turn them off, Tony. <laughs> turn me off. No, I'm going to keep going, Tony. If, if you don't turn it off, I'm going to keep going. I'm on the stage, baby. I'm on the stage. I am here. Appreciate you, Spice. You know, I used to beatbox, man. It used to be Dougie Fresh, Cool Rock Ski. And then it was me. I was supposed to be a member of the Fat Boys, man. Because I was like, I already got the Fat Boy part on lock. All right. Okay. So, I'm hello? leaving now. <laughs> hello? Detroit Red. <laughs> I knew that. I was just messing with you. <laughs> Dog. Hey, Kev, for real. I, I would love to find the CD of me bombing. I oh, my, so please. Bad. If you can find that, please. Dude, I had on my little tailored suit. Oh, please. And I was so bad. Corporate man. A, flow. <laughs> oh man, the corporate flow was on fire then, dog. And I was so bad. Oh. I was terrible. Please find this, Spice. I want to show that to the world. <laughs> All right, my boy. All right, dog. Appreciate you.